today, I'm going to show you how to create this yummy Halloween treat that was inspired by the Halloween Town sequel, Halloween Town High. Homemade marshmallow spiders and my homemade hot cocoa mix in a spiderweb cocoa bomb. The things you'll need to create are homemade marshmallows is one and a half cups of water, three cups of sugar. I prefer to use a cane sugar and I really like using the organic cane sugar you can get from Costco. One and a quarter cup of light corn syrup, a pinch of salt, four envelopes of gelatin, one tablespoon of vanilla. We will need some powdered sugar as well as a nonstick cooking spray. And then to get the little legs on our marshmallow spider, we are going to use some thin pretzel sticks and some white chocolate. You can use any kind you'd like. And then we're also gonna be using some candy eyeballs as well as a piping bag. To make our homemade hot cocoa mix, we are going to use two cups of powdered sugar, a quarter cup of cocoa powder, one 3.9 ounce box of chocolate fudge jello. I like to use the cook and serve kind and one larger 5.9 ounce box of chocolate jello cook and serve, one tablespoon of vanilla powdered creamer, and some salt. I'm also going to be using some cookie cutters that are round to make our little spider bodies shape. We are going to use some nonstick foil, as well as a spatula, an electric mixer, a nine by 13 pan, as well as an electric thermometer or a candy thermometer, and a cooktop. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take our nine by 13 pan and I have lined it with nonstick foil. So I did one piece going this way and one piece going this way. And you wanna make sure you have some excess on the side so that it'll help be like a sling to get it out of the pan easily. And then I have misted my nonstick cooking spray on here. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of powdered sugar and we are going to dust the bottom of the pan. <music> We just want a fine layer that way it will help the marshmallow to not stick to our nonstick foil and it'll help it come out of the pan a little bit easier. And we're gonna set this off to the side until we have our marshmallow batter. The next thing I wanna do is I have my mixer here and I am going to dump three quarters cup of cold water in here. And then we're gonna take our four packets of gelatin and we're gonna sprinkle it over the top, make sure that all of it gets absorbed by the water and then that will allow it to bloom. And then I'm just gonna take my spatula and just make sure that all of it is in the water. And we wanna let that sit for about 15 minutes. Okay, so for the next step, I'm using my uh, portable cooktop. Thank you to my sister and brother-in-law. This is very awesome. That way I don't have to take you guys over to the stove every time I wanna try to cook. And we are going to take three quarters cup of water. Our three cups of cane sugar and one and a quarter cup of light corn syrup. And then we're going to lightly mix this up. And then we're gonna put our cooktop on medium high and we're gonna cook this until it reaches 238 degrees. It's important while your sugar is cooking that you don't stir it. Okay, we have reached the 238 degree mark, so I'm gonna pull this off. Okay, so our gelatin has bloomed, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this on on low speed to kind of break it up a little bit. And then we're gonna take our sugar mixture and we're going to slowly pour it in. Okay, so it has now been 12 minutes. So I'm going to lift this up. As you can see, it's close, but it's not quite there yet. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add my vanilla extract. You could also do peppermint extract. You could do any kind of extract you want, lemon, whatever. Um, but I really like using vanilla. And my favorite type of vanilla to use is Mexican vanilla. It is amazing. It has such a great taste.
and we're going to continue for just a couple more minutes. All right, I think that looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and put it into our pan. Okay, so I'm going to tap my sheet to just get any excess air bubbles out. And then we're going to let this sit for a minimum of four hours. I like to let it sit overnight. And if you're gonna let it sit overnight, just put a piece of foil over the top so that nothing can get into it. Now that there's no more air bubbles, I'm gonna take my powdered sugar and I'm just gonna do a sprinkling on the top so that when I cover it with my foil, it won't stick. Would you like a chance to win this potion bottle? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. My patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Okay, while my marshmallows are setting, I'm gonna show you guys my homemade hot chocolate recipe. So this is the recipe that I put into my homemade hot cocoa bombs. And um, it's just super rich and creamy and really yummy. And you just add hot milk to it. So unlike some, mine does not have any powdered milk in it because I want you to make it with warm milk. If you don't want to make it with milk, by all means, you could add some powdered milk to it, but I like to make it this way. So I've already added two cups of powdered sugar. We're going to add a quarter cup of cocoa powder. We're going to add a tablespoon of vanilla creamer. A teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to add a 3.9 ounce box of chocolate fudge jello pudding mix. But you can use any brand of pudding mix you like. I just like to use the cook and serve versus the instant. And then we're just going to whisk it all together until well combined. Okay, and this makes a really good amount of hot cocoa mix and I just like to store it in a airtight container so like a glass canister or even a mason jar works really well and then that way when you're making your hot cocoa bombs you just use two tablespoons and that's all you need in there and if you're not going to use it for hot cocoa bombs and you just want to make fresh cocoa from home I would recommend adding a little bit of some mini chocolate chips just to get that little bit of extra chocolate flavor that you would get from the outside shell of a cocoa bomb and again it's still just two tablespoons and then eight ounces of milk so if you're going to go with more than that then add more scoops of your cocoa mix okay so it is the next day and I've let my marshmallow set up overnight we are going to flip the pan over and then peel our foil off all I've done here is I have set out a silicone mat and I have covered it with um, some powdered sugar <laughs> And this is why I love nonstick foil because it just comes off so easily. Okay, so now that we have this out, I'm going to dust the top of this with the powdered sugar so that it's not sticky. Okay, so now that everything is dusted, I have a little bowl of powdered sugar here, and then I'm going to take one of our cookie cutters. It's actually also a biscuit cutter, and I like how tall this is and it has little handles. I'm using a four centimeter or one and three quarter inch cutter here, and that's gonna be what we make our little spiders with, um, but it came in a really great set, so I will put a link to that in the description down below because it's got some really good sizes, and again, I love how deep this is. So the first thing you want to do is you want to put a little bit of oil on this and we're going to dip it in the powdered sugar before we start trying to cut anything out. Okay, so I have sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray and I'm just going to dip it in some of the powdered sugar. And then we're going to cut one out. <music> And once we cut it out, we're going to roll it in our powdered sugar to get rid of any of the stickiness of the exposed edges. 
Now, this is what I love about cutting out fresh marshmallows. One, look how springy it is. So cool. But you actually get this really cool shape, which I think actually mimics the little marshmallow spiders really, really well. So super cute. So we're going to cut a bunch of these out and then we'll start to put together our little spiders. Okay, so I've cut all of my little circles out. Now, what's left here, we could definitely cut up and you can use them as little mini marshmallows. You could just start picking off this and eating it, whatever you'd like to do. I mean, you don't have to waste it by any stretch because as long as you put these in an airtight container with a little bit of powdered sugar, making sure that all the sticky parts are covered, they'll last two weeks to a month depending on the situation. Um, and they're really yummy and you can, you know, just keep them at room temperature. You don't have to put them in the fridge or anything like that and they'll stay nice. So now we're going to show you how we're going to get the little legs of the spider prepared and then we're going to start to put it all together. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to make our legs for our spiders and we're going to use some thin pretzel sticks to do that and we're going to coat it in white chocolate. That way it'll give the legs a little bit more stability. However, we're not going to make all of our spiders with legs because if you watch Halloween Town High, some of the little spider bodies roll out of the container and all you can see is the body and the three little eyeballs. So I wanna make some like that as well, which I also think will be a little bit easier to use in your actual hot chocolate. So we're also gonna do some like that as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take our pretzels and we're going to break them into little sections. So the middle and the end are the same size and then the end one is longer so we're just going to make our little segments here to make our legs and then you want to make sure that you make four going one direction and four going the other direction so then that way the nice side of the chocolate will be facing forward when you're looking at your spider so the easiest way to coat these is to take some white chocolate, melt it in the microwave, and then just take your fork and kind of put it in there, roll that around, and then you can just kind of put it off onto your nonstick foil. Um, I did find that a cooling rack, even one that has really fine squares, the little pieces were trying to go through it. So it's easier to just lay it down. And then if there are some really like fat sections or overruns, you can just kind of break that off once you um, let them dry. Now, once I get my little sections in place, I like to take my fork and just very, very lightly dip it into the chocolate and then kind of tap on the joints a little bit to give them a little bit of extra stability. And like I said, you can kind of clean them up a little bit after they dry as well. And voila, we have our eight little spider legs here. And they're not perfect, but honestly, they just will still be super cute on the little marshmallow. So to assemble our little spider, we are going to take our marshmallow and we're gonna set it over here. And then we're going to take the legs and dip it into a little bit of the white chocolate. And then we're just going to shove it into the side of our little spider and let it sit so that the white chocolate can adhere. And we're just gonna add all eight of the legs. Okay, so once we get all of our spider legs on, I like to flip him over and add some white chocolate to the bottom and kind of connect it to some of the legs to give the base a little bit more stability. And once our white chocolate dries, we're just going to flip him back over. And he's a whole lot more stable now. 
To finish them off, we're going to add the three little eyeballs. I have found that the best way to do this is to take the candy eyeball and just dip it in a little bit of white chocolate and then stick it right on your spider. And then we'll let those dry for a sec. I'm also going to add some little eyeballs to one of these guys too that will just be the torso with the eyeballs. And he is super cute, his little eyeballs and rolly body. So now that he has dried, we have our little marshmallow spider. Super, super cute. Don't you just love marshmallow spiders? And now that we've adorned all of our homemade marshmallows, I took some of our homemade hot cocoa mix and I put it inside of a hot cocoa bomb and I gave it a little bit of a spider web design on the top with some white chocolate. And if you'd like to learn how to make the shell of the hot cocoa bombs, you can watch my butterbeer bomb video. I'll put a card up above and a link in the description. But we are going to go ahead and take our little hot cocoa bomb and place it inside of our cup. And there you have it, our yummy homemade marshmallow spiders and our homemade hot cocoa mix. Perfect for a cool fall evening or fun to have for a Halloween town movie marathon. And then we have our rich creamy hot cocoa and we're gonna top it off with our little marshmallow spider. If you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much.